So here's a scoop of branch chain amino acids. It's five grams that contains leucine, isoleucine, and valine in a two one one ratio, which is the ratio you'd ideally want for BCAAs. And here's a scoop of regular protein powder, 25 grams, double chocolate, and it's also got five grams of BCAAs. So why would you pick that when you can pick this? Well, you probably shouldn't. These days, there appear to be a lot more people outspoken about how BCA supplementation is overall pointless and just a waste of money. But that still hasn't stopped beginners in fitness from asking this one question, are BCA supplements worth it? And so I think it's worth looking at this topic just a bit closer from both sides. But for context, let's first identify three reasons why anyone would consider BCA supplementation at all. Those being muscle growth and retention, recovery, and training fatigue. For muscle growth, I think it's clear to everyone by now that adequate protein consumption plays a vital role. The proteins in our bodies are made up of only 20 amino acids, which you can think of as building blocks. Of these 20, nine of them are referred to as essential because our bodies cannot create them, so we have to get them from our foods. And of these nine, three of them are referred to as branched chain amino acids based on their unique chemical structure. Leucine in particular is the MVP because of its critical role in initiating muscle protein synthesis. I think with this one statement alone, you can already piece together why most people might buy into the idea of BCAAs. If they play a crucial role in muscle growth, why wouldn't you supplement with them? Well, the answer is because you still need all nine essential amino acids for building muscle. Leucine alone isn't enough. Think of a construction site that needs to build a tower. You have your construction manager who gives the go ahead on the project, only he wasn't supplied with enough workers, and so nothing really gets built. While leucine stimulates muscle protein synthesis in the short term, you need all 20 amino acids for protein synthesis to be sustained in the long term. With respect to muscle growth, BCA supplementation is pretty useless since it doesn't provide the full spectrum of amino acids. You'd have to get the rest elsewhere. For all the talk about how important it is to consume a diet with a complete protein source, you have to remember that BCAAs are in fact an incomplete protein source. Now, I've also heard people argue that BCAs are actually better for situations where your goal is to retain muscle, such as if you were on a cut, but research hasn't shown anything definitively to say that BCAs can do this preferentially if you are already hitting your total daily protein intake. Whether you're building or retaining muscle, that doesn't change the fact that you need a complete protein source, something that BCAs fall tragically short of. Now, the second part of building muscle is, of course, resistance training. No doubt, some of you have probably experienced delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS for short. <laughs> While I'm weird and actually enjoy this sensation, DOMS can be a hindrance if you haven't recovered fully enough for your next training session. And this can prevent you from working out specific muscle groups to maximal intensity. BCAAs are thought to improve recovery and reduce soreness so that you can maintain your training intensity unimpeded. A 2017 study observed that BCAAs reduced markers for muscle damage. But for context, this was compared to a placebo rather than another protein source. So what this tells me is that BCAAs are certainly better than nothing, but that doesn't mean they're superior to protein sources that you could get from your diet. Whey protein powder, for instance, would still be a far better supplement in this case. A more recent study concluded that BCAAs still haven't demonstrated any impactful benefits that are worth supplementing. Training fatigue is the last reason people would consider using BCAA supplements because they compete with the amino acid tryptophan. Now, broadly speaking, tryptophan is also an amino acid that's thought to play a role in serotonin production, which may increase fatigue during exercise. Since BCAAs can compete with tryptophan for entering to the brain, an increased amount would help mitigate fatigue. Now, while this sounds good in theory, the actual effect hasn't shown noticeable improvement in exercise performance. So despite the intention of building muscle or training more intensely, research has shown that BCAAs fall short in these regards. Benefits that you might see are pretty incremental and don't seem quite impactful. It's not that BCAAs are bad or harmful, it's simply a question of whether or not they are worth your money, and most signs point to the fact that they aren't, provided that you are consuming adequate protein throughout the day. But with that said, are there situations where BCAAs can provide value? Well, the only one I can think of is if your diet is naturally low on essential amino acids. Typically, this is seen in vegetarians and vegans, although that's not to say that you can't maximize muscle growth on either of those diets. But many plant options aren't complete proteins and as such, may be missing one or more essential amino acids. In this case, BCAAs could act as a complement, but honestly, I would say that plant protein powder or essential amino acid supplements would still be better. And of course, you could always combine multiple plant proteins together to get a complete source. I've also heard people advocate the use of BCAAs for those who have a preference for facet training. 
But despite the label claims, BCAAs do contain calories, so either way, you're breaking your fast if you train with them. So what's the verdict? Well, BCAA supplementation is probably not going to benefit you if you are already getting enough quality protein daily, which should naturally contain enough BCAAs. And these are something that I've used in the past while I was under the impression that they would improve training intensity and aid in muscle growth. Unfortunately, many others are still misinformed by the marketing surrounding BCAAs as something that's a necessity. Instead, it's pretty clear that they simply fall into a region where they aren't completely useless, but also can't compete with far better options such as protein powder. Anyway, I hope you all found this video helpful. My goal in all of this is just to keep you well informed. Supplements are only getting more expensive these days, and I think you can better spend your money elsewhere. However, if you are someone who still uses BCAAs and you still want to continue, then go for it. These aren't harmful, and at best, they still provide some incremental benefits. Anyway, that's it for today's session. Let me know if you have any thoughts or questions in the comment section. But until then, I'll see you all next time.